and welcome into a playoff clinching edition. That's right. I said it. A playoff clinching edition of Spits and Suds. Also a victory edition of Spits and Suds. Hey, everyone. I'm Gavin Spittle of 105.3 The Fan. Boy, feels good tonight. Hashtag Texas hockey. Hashtag we are in. Stars over the Vancouver Canucks in Western Canada by the score of three to one. Jamie Ben on an absolute heater scored in late in the third period on a power play to really seal it up. Stars also got an empty netter with uh, Jason Robertson uh, to end the game. Just a real nice performance for the boys tonight as they just continue to be on a tear. Um, and let's talk about Jamie Ben. So the assist on the hints goal in the first period was career point number 900. So he sits at 901 right now. Only the second player in Dallas Stars history to record 900 career points. Who's the other? Well, I'll give you a hint. He has a statue in front of the American Airlines Center. Number nine, Mike Madonna. Ben's eight-game point streak is the longest since December of 2022 for the captain, and his six-game goal streak ties the longest of his career. That, my friends, is match March Madness. That, my friends, is an absolute heater by Jamie Ben. What a performance by several of the players tonight. Pete DeBoer saying after the game, you know, we just got to continue to be good at the basics. And they certainly will. Let's start with the standings and where we stand tonight. So not only do you have a massive victory against the Vancouver Canucks, and then what if I sold you this, Stars fans? It only gets better. It's like kind of like the ShamWow, where it's like, if you buy now, guess what else you get for just $5.99? Or you get this free. Well, the Dallas Stars beat the Vancouver Canucks to stay on top of the West. Oh, but it gets better. The New York Rangers go to Denver and beat Colorado in overtime. Granted, Colorado does get a point, but nonetheless, a loss. Let's shift to Winnipeg, where the Vegas Knights take down the Winnipeg Jets. So there's two. Oh, and a streak was stopped. The Arizona Coyotes, who the Stars just beat, put a whooping on the Nashville Predators tonight by the score of 8-4. to four. I mean, if you're Nashville, you are kicking yourself right now. You're like, we come this close and then we lose to Arizona when we're only four points back of Winnipeg for the third position? So, so interesting, the NHL standings and where everyone's at. As of tonight, your Dallas Stars go over the 100 point mark at 101 points that is second in the NHL to the Rangers at 102 Rangers have played 73 games stars 74 games stars have played one more game than the Avalanche and the Winnipeg Jets both have a game in hand on the stars but the lead is now 3 over Colorado and the lead is an impressive seven now over the Winnipeg Jets. The Stars go up three points on Vancouver. So, to recap, number one in the Western Conference, number one in the Central Division, number two overall in the NHL. Winners of six straight, eight and two in their last ten. Whew. Isn't that beauty? Man, we can do podcasts all the time like this. You want a podcast twice a day? I'm delivering it the way these guys are playing. <laughs> hey, listen, Jamie Ben, it is so great to see. It is great to see the rejuvenation in his game. We can't talk about it enough on Spits and Suds because, listen, that contract was a burden. And all of us were saying, um, it's not that we don't like Jamie Ben. It's just that, you know, the career is kind of sliding you know, on the wrong side. And that's okay because he's get getting older. Well, then all of a sudden in the last two years, here comes Wyatt Johnston. And in the last few months, here comes Logan Stankoven. 
And it really makes you think with Sagan and Ben, was it the players around them? Because Sagan's having a good year because of Duchesne and Marchman. Is it the players around them? And maybe they weren't sliding as much as people like me were saying. Maybe it was the players around them. Too much pressure. And since they were playing together, you know, I mean, there's just so many factors at stake. You know who also did this? Dustin Brown for the LA Kings. Dustin Brown was one of those guys where basically you're like, all right, basically Dustin Brown's going to turn into an expensive fourth liner. And then all of a sudden the LA Kings kind of had a rejuvenation and Dustin Brown in his last few years played really, really well for the Kings. So sometimes you can just get that kickstart and Jamie Ben's getting that kickstart. The other guy I want to talk about is Jason Robertson. Jason Robertson took a really clean, very good physical hit early in the game. And then Jason Robertson did something that I love to see. He decided to exert his physicality, something that is not talked about enough with Jason Robertson's game. And he was tying people up along the boards. He was checking people hard. He was winning puck battles. He was great with the stick and the puck tonight and set up beautiful goals. So a goal and an assist for Robertson. He was really impressive tonight. Rope hints with three points tonight for the Dallas stars. So it's great because Rope hints was kind of snake bitten. And after that first goal, you're like, come on, are you really going to take away a Rope hints goal based on a Robertson potential high stick, man, that was so close. I think if they called that first goal upon review, if initially they called it a high stick, which obviously the play would have been whistled dead in the first place, but you know, plays like that, it's one of those things where it's too close to overturn. And like I said, if it was a high stick from the beginning, it would have been called from the beginning. This was a continuation. And because of the goal, uh, the team, the Vancouver Canucks certainly have the right to challenge it. They were assessed a penalty. So the stars got two consecutive power plays, didn't score on the, uh, on the second one, but going on the kill constantly like that really kills the momentum. And I thought the stars did a really nice job defensively. And that's one of the highlights tonight. You know what we're not talking about anymore? We're not talking about, and there's no coincidence that the Chris Tanif arrival coincides with what I'm about to say. The calmness and the relaxation, the ability to get it out of the zone, and the ability to play good defense. We were heading into this trade deadline saying they need at least two defensemen. Tanif and maybe if they could get Sean Walker, if they could fit or pull a three team trade so someone else could pick up salary. But they got Tanif. That bumped Ryan Suter down to the third line pairing. Hockenpah goes out with an injury. Nils Lundqvist playing real well, played a good game tonight. I thought Ryan Suter was excellent tonight. Ryan Suter was very physical. Ryan Suter's not making mistakes, and we can't harp on this enough, folks. Ryan Suter as a third pairing at defense is a good thing for the Dallas Stars. Sure, he might make a few mistakes here and there, but what defenseman doesn't? They're like quarterbacks in football. They have to forget about it real quick. Heck, our best defenseman uh, had a turnover the other night that led to a goal in Miro Haskin and on a rough pass. But we can't dwell on that. What we can say is that Ryan Suter is playing a very solid third pairing. And just like we say that Jamie Ben all of a sudden has a rejuvenation with the likes of Wyatt Lang, Wyatt, Wyatt Langford plays for the Texas Rangers. Had a good game, by the way. <laughs> Wyatt, Wyatt Johnston, too many Wyatts here in DFW, and Logan Stankoven. Can we now say that with Essa Lindell paired with Chris Tanev? Because we're not talking about the sliding scale with both Essa Lindell and Ryan Suter. So sometimes chips have to fall as far as chemistry, as far as line mates, as far as chemistry with defensive pairings. With better defense, 
Look at Jake Ottinger. Jake Ottinger played really well tonight. Jake Ottinger made an amazing save. You know, you have those flashy saves where it's like a glove and the glove whips, and that's awesome. But only Jake Ottinger with the six foot six frame can do that back toe save that he made on a wraparound that clearly was going to go in front of the net and most likely could have ended up in a goal for the Canucks. But Jake Ottinger prevented that with a really good look back toe save. I thought that was one of the saves of the game. Jake Ottinger is looking really sharp lately. In fact, if you break it down, his last four games, two goals allowed, two goals allowed, two goals allowed, one goal allowed tonight. That is vintage Jake Ottinger, and we need to talk about that more. So that save percentage is now going to go up over 900. And the goals against average is certainly going to go down. So really, really good night for the Stars. Also want to mention Nashville, Colorado clash tomorrow. That's something we need to look at as Stars fans. Go Preds. As much as I love to see Nashville in their heater right now, I am super stoked if Nashville can go and beat up on Colorado. This episode is brought to you by Transitions Light Intelligent Lenses. Transitions Light Intelligent Lenses seamlessly adapt to changing light situations, changing from clear to dark when outdoors and back to clear when you're inside. Transitions Lenses block 100% of UVA and UVB rays and filter blue-violet light indoors and outdoors. Choose from a wide range of lens colors and express your personal style with Transitions Lenses, tailored to your eye care needs. Visit Transitions.com to learn more. This episode is brought to you by Allstate. Allstate wants to remind fans that mayhem is everywhere, like at your pregame barbecue. While you prep your meats, that grease trap you forgot to empty is prepping to smoke your porch, garage, and the car inside. And without the right home and auto insurance coverage, the cost to repair this could eat up your savings. So bundle home and auto with Allstate to save and get protected from mayhem like this. Bundled savings vary and are not available in every state. Coverage is subject to policy terms and conditions. Walmart Plus members save on meeting up with friends. Save on having them over for dinner with free delivery with no hidden fees or markups. That's groceries plus napkins plus that vegetable chopper to make things a bit easier. Plus, members save on gas to go meet them in their neck of the woods. Plus, when you're ready for the ultimate sign of friendship, start a show together with your included Paramount Plus subscription. Walmart Plus members save on this plus so much more. Start a 30-day free trial at walmartplus.com. Paramount Plus is central plan only. Separate registration required. See Walmart Plus terms and conditions. Jordan H. at Harper Hockey Fan. Hey, Jordan. I thought Wyatt and Otter were the Stars' best players tonight. Great to see Otter have a get-right game against a good team. Um, I actually think that Ottinger's been really good in the last four games. Uh, I've seen a difference. You're seeing better rebound control. You're seeing more confidence in the net. Seems like... Uh, you know, Jake's playing with a lot of confidence right now. I love what DeBoer did the other night, giving Sagan a night off and playing Scott Wedgwood. I thought that was really good. You had Jake Ottinger play uh, some really good games prior to that. And a lot of times you go with the hot goalie. And Pete DeBoer said, no, we're going to give you some rest and we're going to stay on this. Uh, Jake Ottinger load management. Scott Wedgwood's going to go in because we're playing San Jose. Wedgwood played well. Yes, gave up some net, but made some really good saves. This is what your backup goalie needs to do. Just win. And the Stars did that. Gave Sagan some rest as well. So the moves that Pete DeBoer were making um, certainly paid dividends. And I think that's why we're seeing, you know, a healthy Jake Ottinger uh, play much better. Uh, let's see. Uh, Christopher DeHardy at C. DeHardy. Ben's been so good lately. Not only that, the fact that the Stars kept the Canucks out of the net on the power play was mega. Special teams won this game with the two power play goals. You have to get the little things right for a playoff run, and the Stars look really good right now. Christopher, it was like you were speaking Pete DeBoer's words after the game because he was talking about the basics and you know not worrying about victories as much as just doing the little things. 
and being good at the basics. And that's what the stars are really doing right now. They're getting it out of their zone. They're minimizing their turnovers. They are so much better on the kill. Remember how the stars were struggling for a little bit, uh, killing power plays. That's gone away. They're now one of the better teams in the league once again. So that's a vast improvement, and you called it right. I mean, when you look at that offense for the Vancouver Canucks, the fact that you could minimize that, uh, that is really impressive, especially on the power play. When you have players uh, like Hughes, who's on his way to a Norris Trophy, like JT Miller, uh, you know, I mean, they're just all over the place, like Connor Garland, um, like Pedersen, you know, who played 21 minutes tonight. Um, those are players, and Rick Tockett has those guys playing well. Vancouver Canucks have been one of the most consistent teams in the NHL this year. They've been on top um, of their division all year long. Basically, they've been on top of the Western Conference all year long. So to hold them at one goal, uh, that's really impressive. So I think that's a really good tweet, my friend. Uh, let's see. What else do we have tonight on the Twitter? Uh, at MB Tendy. Uh, let's see. He says about Jamie Ben, one of the best to ever suit up for the Dallas Stars. Haven't seen that much emotion from the captain in a while on that. Uh, go game winning goal. Love to see it. This was a quality win. Yeah. Uh, for those that don't know, Jamie Ben is from that area and, um, you know, it's basically the hometown of Jamie and, uh, Jordy Ben from the Victoria, Vancouver Island area, uh, which is a boat ride away from Vancouver. Uh, so, uh, I've actually been there. Absolutely beautiful area. If you get to go to that area, I would suggest going to, uh, Busher gardens, one of the best arboretums in the world. That's just a <laughs> spits and suds, uh, side note. <laughs> um, but yeah, Jamie Ben, uh, it was great to see him celebrate. Great to see him having fun. Great to see the captain crack a smile. We don't see smiles that often uh, from, from the captain. And it was cool in the post game because he was saying that, and it's interesting when players admit this, um, that, yeah, the stars are looking at the standings and how can you not? And that there's a lot of chatter around dinner uh, from the boys about what's going on in the NHL. So that's good. You know, that's an excitement. I feel like the team really feels as though they're in just one of the better races in hockey right now. And you'd love to see the boys get into that. So uh, that's really good. So as far as one of the best ever to suit up for the Dallas Stars, yeah, you have to say that, certainly, because, you know, to be among that elite company with 900 points, with Mike Madano being the other, uh, that's quite impressive. You know, as far as other stars, I think Sergei Zuboff certainly is uh, behind uh, Madonna on that list. Um, you know, if you want to go best all around players, certainly Yuri Letnin can be brought up and they're all up in the rafters. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting. And we'll talk to Sean Shapiro on a Friday afternoon visit about Jamie Ben and potential Hall of Fame. And if not in the Hall of Fame, what happens as far as does his number get in the rafters? He has one more year remaining on his contract with Dallas. So uh, we shall see. Uh, but the stars are very, let's say, finicky when it comes to numbers being retired in the rafters. Personally, I think Brett Hall should be up there. And I think Ed Belfour should be up there. Those are National Hockey League Hall of Famers. And when you look at the history of the Dallas Stars, both were massive contributors. So I think Hull and Belfour should be up there. And honestly, if he finishes his career, great. I don't see even if he doesn't get in the Hall of Fame. But we'll have to ask Brad Alberts, the president, as far as, you know, what are the criteria for going up in the rafters? And if it is Hall of Fame, that might be a little tough one to get in, but you know, let's see what happens the next couple of, uh, next couple of years. Uh, Kenny Howard at 141 says, hope you're able to watch this playoff level hockey game tonight. Feels like the Canucks know to treat the stars like a playoff foe. I already hate Susie. Let's go. Yeah. I mean, why not? <laughs> um, wouldn't it be fun if you played Vancouver? 
uh, that would mean that you've advanced pretty far. Uh, so that would be awesome. But yes, let's give credit to the fans in Vancouver. I think sometimes we forget uh, because it is Vancouver and our focus is in the United States, how massive of a hockey city this is and how great it is to see the city of Vancouver rejuvenated as far as their love for hockey. They face some tough years, some tough situations. And the fact that they're heading to the playoffs, it's really, really good for hockey. Um, so, yeah, crowd's excited. Tockett's done an unbelievable job up there. They are just a beast offensively. They can push you around defensively. They have some real physical defensemen, as well as they have a speedy guy in Hughes that can do it all. They're just a neat team to watch. Um, and they pretty much manhandle the Stars this year. So, you know, not the best matchup. And for the Stars to come in and play them like they did and limit their offense, that is what makes it, to me, one of the better wins of the year. Lately, I've been all about my new Aveeno skincare routine. I start each day with a daily moisturizing body wash in the shower, which feels like creamy goodness and doesn't dry out my skin. After, I slather on the daily moisturizing body lotion for 24 hours of clinically proven hydration. This powerful combo gives me two times the moisture in two easy steps, thanks to both nourishing oat formulas, leaving my skin feeling soft and smooth. Shop Aveeno now at Target. One in eight. That's how many people have worked at a McDonald's. Who serve millions the best Big Mac and best birthday party they've ever had. Who haven't just seen kids graduate from a Happy Meal, but have gotten help graduating themselves. Because they know the skills learned here. Bienvenidos. Welcome to English Under the Arches. Can help you grow from here or keep growing here. One in eight start at McDonald's. And where you start stays with you. Uh, let's see. Crow Wi-Fi says that Connor Garland can skate. Yeah, Connor Garland's an amazing story for the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, he's always been a fighter, uh, just a small guy, uh, about five foot eight, five foot nine. Uh, very famous uh, hockey school. Shattuck actually cut him um, up north. And so he had to go play for the Boston Bruins Junior, which is a kind of a junior hockey team. And um, he, he joined teammates Ryan Donato and uh, Jack Eichel on that team. <laughs> Not bad for a teenage team. Um, and then he went to the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League team. He actually had a skating coach um that you know he got with when he was younger and that helped with his speed even more uh had a massive year uh in the quebec league and was drafted by the arizona coyotes uh mid-round and uh you know has uh been really solid ever since and has just turned into a terrific player real gritty for his size not afraid to rough it up uh just a real solid player uh so that's a that's a uh Great scouting perspective for you because, yeah, Connor Garland is really fast on uh, skates. At Matt Gwynn, 34, says, I love Stankoven's ability to agitate defenses by being in the right place and drawing penalties. Also, Joe gets the worst of it sometimes. Loves that guy. Yeah, I mean, the fact that Joe Pavelski can stand in there game in and game out is just so impressive. Sean and I are going to get into it tomorrow, but we're going to talk because of a controversy of a local, I uh, shouldn't say local, of a uh, reporter slash blogger, um, podcaster that basically was critical of Travis Hyman after he scored his 50th goal with Edmonton Oilers. And one of the things that it, I'll point out now that I will extend my thoughts tomorrow was he said, and by the way, most of his goals anyway, were like cleanup for McDavid. How hard is that? How hard is it to play next to Austin Matthews in Toronto and just clean up and be in front of the net? Well, I would say Matt brings up a great point on Twitter. It is hard and it is a skill. And you know who else was really good at cleaning things up? Hall of Famer, Brett Hall. You know who's really good at cleaning things up when he gets in the dirty area? Tyler Sagan. How about Jason Robertson? He's really good there, too. And Joe Pavelski. 
So are those players bad? Are those players privileged? And like I said, we'll go into it tomorrow. But just as much as it's wrong to to criticize an NHLer who has fought so hard in this league and finally gets 50 goals, yeah, it's nice to have a McDavid. It's nice to have an Austin Matthews. But as we pointed out earlier in this podcast, it's nice to have a Wyatt Johnston if you're Jamie Benn. It's nice to have a Matt Duchesne if you're Tyler Sagan. And you know what? They feel likewise. Wyatt Johnston has learned so much because of a player. And what we don't give enough credit to is spacing and the art of moving. It's not like the old days where you just stay in front of the net, park, and just wait as you get slashed. These times have changed. Joe Pavelski does the most subtle movements as far as releasing from the defender's stick, releasing from the defender's hips, and freeing himself up to make those tips to collect rebounds. That's an art. That's not just simply clean up duty. That is an art. And it's called the dirty area for a reason. So, yes, I absolutely love Stankoven on that line and his ability to agitate. I think they get just as mad with Wyatt Johnston because these two kids are relentless. These two kids... If you steal the puck and you're going out of your zone, it's almost like you need a rear view mirror and you need to look at it because they're coming and they're coming on the back check and they have deceptive speed. And how many times have we seen either Johnston or Stankoven catch up to the play and causing a turnover? These guys are gritty. They're tough. Ludwig and I, a great comparison to us for Stankoven, a terrific player is Brandon Gallagher. Up in Montreal, Gallagher hasn't been able to remain healthy through his career, but when he is, man, is he a water bug out there. And it was really funny. Ryan Whitney on the Spitting Chicklets podcast used that same term, water bugger, uh, because it's zigzagging around the ice and just, you know, tough to catch, tough to keep up with, just relentless energy. How many times you see a water bug slow down? You don't. They're just zigzagging along the pond. And that's what Wyatt Johnston and and, and Logan Stankoven do. They zigzag along the pond. So uh, to recap, stars, absolute beast tonight in Vancouver. Now, cannot overlook the Seattle Kraken. That's a game, as far as a trap game, that's coming up. But San Jose and Arizona could have been trap games as well. But Seattle is not going to make the playoffs this year. They are a minus 15 goal differential, but they've won two in a row. So let's finish off this road trip with a solid two points. So the Stars, as we end this podcast, are first in the Western Conference. Go over 100 points. Clinch a playoff berth. Are first in the Central Division. It's a great night to be a Stars fan. We'll talk to NHL insider Sean Shapiro in just a few hours, but also want to thank you once again. We've had a record march here on Spits and Suds, so spread the word. The playoffs are coming, and after every single playoff game, we will be here with you just like we've been here for every single game, post-game edition of Spits and Suds. So look forward to having Sean on in just a few hours. I'm Gavin Spittle of 105.3 The Fan. Thanks for listening and supporting Spits and Suds.